and my name is Ryan and this is Growing in the City. If this is your first time following us, we provide weekly gardening tips to help you have a more successful growing season. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something important that happens each fall in most parts of the world called the first frost date. Knowing your first frost date is important because it allows us to plant our fall gardens to harvest before frost is expected and protect our plants against freezing temperatures which may be arriving shortly after the expected first frost date. Luckily, meteorologists and other climate scientists have been studying climate for decades and have developed models to predict cold temperatures by probability, down to the level of detail of individual zip codes. It's really phenomenal. Obviously, the dates the model shows are predictions, but it gives us a much better idea of when colder temperatures will start arriving in our neighborhoods. From last week, you'll remember we introduced the U.S. Hardiness Zone Map, courtesy of NOAA, or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which tracks average annual minimum temperatures. This chart gives us an idea where the colder and warmer regions of the U.S. are, but it doesn't describe when freezing temperatures start arriving. NOAA staff referred me to this first frost date map from MyGardenLife.com and look at how the map is similar to the hardiness zone map and that the northern central U.S. states like Michigan and Minnesota are both chilly chilly. But look what happens in the mountain west where temperatures aren't typically very cold but can be early in the fall. See how the pink region in the frost map you know, is more pronounced in the west compared to in the hardiness zone map. This distinction uh, could make a big difference if you're gardening in Washington, Oregon, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, for example. I've added several expected first frost dates to the map so you can see the variety across America. I think most people realize that the further south you are and the closer to the ocean you are, the less likely you'll have to worry about freezing temperatures. But there's a third factor that's just as important, which is altitude. If you hear a weatherman talking about potential frost temperatures in a city nearby you, even if you only live 15 miles away, if you're at a thousand feet higher elevation, your microclimate temperatures could be significantly colder. There's a big difference between 33 and 26 degrees, for example. In the next couple of weeks, I'll be discussing what happens to your plants as temperatures drop near or below freezing temperatures, as well as what you can do about it to protect your fall crops. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so new videos will be easier to find as they are released. Let's go over a couple of examples now. So here's Sacramento International Airport. The percentages actually go from 10 to 90 percent confidence, but I'm only sharing the 10 to 50 percent so it's easier to see. The dates go longer as the likelihood increases. For example, the chart shows a 10 percent chance there will be a low of 36 degrees by November 3rd, but a 50 percent chance it will occur by November 18th. The 50 percent date is fine to plan by, although you may want to be more cautious for crops that are very sensitive to colder weather. The dashes you see here indicate the likelihood of temperatures in this range happening being very low. This intuitively makes sense. It's rare to see 20 degree nights in California, unless you're in the mountains. Here's a different example. Central Park in New York City. At Central Park, they have a 50% chance of having their first frost date on November 2nd. But it could come a couple of weeks earlier. This video is being released October 25th, and it hasn't happened yet. Forecasts don't appear to have a frost day on the near horizon either, so it looks like New York City is having a warmer than typical fall, at least early on. Use the link in the description below to find your 50% expected first frost date, and again remember that's the 36 degree date. Also note the 32 degree a freezing date, and the 28 degree hard freeze date. If you've missed last week's video discussing square foot gardening in the fall, I've included it here, as well as the next video describing freezing temperatures and what you can do to protect your plants. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.